I started to question if any of that is actually true. And I was like, are people just making this stuff up or do people actually make money online? Hello, Seiki. You were able to quit your job after seven months doing affiliate marketing and now you launch your own software. And I think a lot of people would like to model what you did. Tell us a little bit about your background. Like how did you get into affiliate marketing? What was your job before? Yeah, so so I have an interesting, in terms of what I used to do before in my background, it's interesting because I, I did a lot of different things. Um, But I actually got started as an entrepreneur, or, or I should say entrepreneur, because I wasn't really doing stuff for a long time, uh, but back in 2012. And at the same time, I worked several different jobs. So I, my background, I worked in sales for several years. I worked in management as well and, and different kind of things, right? Um, and all of these jobs I was kind of working in because I felt like they would help me in my dream to be an entrepreneur. But at the same time, that whole time, you know, I was... Um, my my journey from 2012 up until now as an entrepreneur the vast majority of that time i was spent spending a lot of time you know just consuming stuff reading i tried different you know businesses but everything i tried always fails because i was always kind of you know half in half out i didn't go all in it wasn't until um you know when, when i started really taking my journey seriously as an entrepreneur was when i got involved in e-commerce which was what i was doing before I got into affiliate marketing. And what happened with that was I took this course and I actually attended, there was a mastermind kind of thing I attended in Niagara Falls, Canada. And it was, it was a great experience. And I was really, really excited because I saw this as my opportunity to finally fulfill my dreams of being an entrepreneur. I've always been someone who didn't like really working a job. You know, people are wired differently, but I, I, I mean, today I slept in until it's Saturday. I slept in until like 1 p.m., 1.15 or something like that. <laughs> and I, I like to sleep in. I like to, you know, I'm, I'm a creative person and I like to do things my own way. Also, I don't like being kind of feeling the lack of freedom that you feel a lot of times in, um, in the workplace and all of that. So I knew that my whole life um, and also watching my dad because my dad is an entrepreneur himself. And so just being exposed to that. And, and I, I knew my whole life that I couldn't live forever in the nine to five grind and, and just working a regular job. So, so it was always a goal to build my own business. Now, the thing is, when I got into e-commerce, I was doing drop shipping. There was the big wave of Shopify stores and all that that people were pushing a few years ago. I think people still push right now. But I got swept into that. And what I learned when I went to this course um, was I, I learned how to set up a Shopify store and how to drive traffic specifically through Facebook ads. And that was the only traffic strategy that I knew up until then, because I hadn't like most of my time with the businesses that I, that I tried to do before. I, I didn't even understand the basic stuff of like building up a list, um, you know, targeting the right people and all that kind of stuff. I was really just shooting in the dark up until then. And I never sought out, you know, um, good mentorship to help me. I was, I, I just tried to learn everything myself, which was a big mistake. But when I got into this, um, you know, e-commerce, I was doing that for about a year and a half. And what ended up happening because I was relying so heavily on paid ads and I didn't have a lot of money to spend. I was a university student and uh, you know how students live usually. And, and at the same time, like I had a job while I was going to school, but my job was semi part-time. I didn't get paid a lot for it. It was also in the nonprofit sector. So naturally there, you weren't paid as much in the be like in the first place. Um, so, so in terms of like spending money on ads, I was literally burning through all the money that I had and I was even spending more money than I actually had. I was borrowing money sometimes and, and I was taking money away from other things that I should have been putting money into, such as my rent, such as certain bills and things like that. Because I had this idea in the back of my head that all it took was for me to find that winning product. Once I find a product that I could, that would be profitable on my ad spend then I'll scale that up and I'll make all of the money that I spent back. So I was willing to take those risks of not paying my rent for a couple months and putting that into putting that into advertising, which was a bad, a very bad decision because what ended up happening was about a year and a half into that journey. I, um, I, I completely ran out of cash and I got to the point where I was, um, I was actually sent a letter from my landlord And he told me that I had two months to pay all the money that I owed in rent, which at that point was a couple thousand dollars. Wow. No clue how I was going to get my hands on that. But I had two months to pay all the money or he was taking me to court and putting me out on the streets. 
and so so I had that issue, but then at the same time too, I had a bunch of you know bills, my phone bill and other stuff that I didn't pay off, and I had to shut down my Facebook ads because I just couldn't continue to keep. I couldn't continue. I couldn't afford to keep burning through money, so I had to shut down the ads. But then the problem is because the only way that I knew how to drive traffic to my store was through Facebook ads. That meant that I was shutting down my business, and at that point, I had really lost hope because. It was about six years into my journey. I had already been trying to do th different things, I, and I tried tons of different stuff um, since 2012. And every time I would try some new kind of business idea, it would be all over my Facebook. I would announce it to people. I would, you, you know what I mean? So people who knew me in my personal life, they knew that Zeki was always trying this stuff, but they but they saw me as someone who had their my head in the clouds, and and their attitude was kind of like, oh, here's Zeki's next thing that he's doing. You know what I mean? So yeah, I, I really know exactly what what you mean because I've been through yeah kind of a similar journey with my software and like uh, even like uh, until this the summit launch, like this is exactly what my family, even my wife, thinks of my my whole endeavor. So I, I know exactly what what you're talking about, and I really like that you bring up this this story uh, because uh, this is something that I want to do on the summit is. Uh, tell people like do not choose a business model where you need cash to to run the business like to run facebook ads because if you do not have money this business model just does not make sense uh to to, to choose because you you do not have the resources so i'm curious like what happened next yeah for sure man and and that's a big thing that people got to realize like you got to understand where you are right now what resources you have and don't have and then you have to choose something based on that because there are a lot of different ways to make money online and we'll get into that in a second when i switch to affiliate marketing uh but so, so whatever situation you're in you can find something that works for you but you have to choose something that actually works because one of the top reasons that people's businesses actually get shut down whether we're talking about online businesses or offline businesses is just simply cash flow even if they're even if you know they're actually selling and they're actually like you know selling things at a profit if they don't have cash flow and your your business is very cash intensive, which was the case for me, then you got to shut everything down. And that's what happened for me. So I was in this situation where, you know, I had so much money that I owed. Um, I was really afraid of going homeless. And the worst part about it was I didn't know any way that I would get myself out of the situation because the only, the only hope that I had to make that kind of money was through my business. But I had to shut everything down and I didn't know how I can possibly make money um, through e-commerce at least if I wasn't spending money on ads to get eyeballs onto my store in the first place. So it was a pretty bleak situation. I did get lucky because I, in my desperation, I started contacting, you know, friends and, and stuff and just asking people if they can just do me a favor and, and lend me some money, which honestly was really embarrassing because, because what I mentioned, like people had been watching me for the past couple of years and saw that Zeki is always talking about building this huge empire and all this kind of stuff. And here he is coming to me asking to lend him a couple hundred bucks, a couple thousand dollars and whatnot. But I had no choice. That's what I had to do. So I got in contact with people. I was lucky enough that I had good friends who were willing to, um, you know, lend me some money to help me get out of the situation. But I obviously I promised that I would pay them back as soon as possible, which now that put me in another difficult situation because I didn't want to ruin those relationships. So I needed to figure out how I could quickly get myself out of this financial rut I was in and pay back my friends, um, you know, as soon as I can so that I don't run into any problems or, or whatnot because of it. So if it wasn't for that being in that situation, there's a big chance that I might have just given up on, you know, the whole journey because it like at that point when I had to shut down my e-commerce business like that, there were, I failed at so many things before, but that was like the, it felt like the nail in the coffin where it was like, dude, I started to question if I could ever make money online. I started to question, you know, people do these screenshots and these Facebook groups and start talking about their earnings, whatever. I started to question if any of that is actually true. And I was like, are people just making this stuff up or do people actually make money online? And the funny thing about it is this is... Uh, I'm just going to mention it for newbies getting started. You know what I learned in my journey over time is a lot of people actually do fake that stuff. I, I, I know people always say it and they're always skeptical of gurus and whatever. There was a point where I were just being overly skeptical, but the longer I'm in this journey, the more I realize that a lot of people who, who I thought were killing it are just playing a game and aren't, um, aren't actually doing it. But that's a whole, that's a whole nother, um, that's a whole nother conversation. But anyways, at the point that I was in my journey, 
uh, I did start to question if there, this was actually a legitimate thing. But then I realized that that doesn't make sense because you have to think about what is, what is making money online at the end of the day. Uh, the internet is just another way to reach people. And when it comes to business, when it comes to making money, really at the end of the day, what you need is you need something you can offer people and you need to put that in front of people. It doesn't matter if you're putting them in front of people through the internet, through TV, through billboards, through whatever it is, as long as you're reaching the right people and it's something that they actually want, right? So so I started realizing how kind of ludicrous my um, my skepticism actually was about the not being able to make money online, especially since you got companies like Amazon. How much money does Amazon make online? I know Amazon makes money because I've bought things through Amazon before. <laughs> so, so I decided, you know what? I'm going to try one last thing. But I knew that I couldn't afford to keep doing things the way that I was doing. And up until then, you know, since I, I had been running Facebook ads for so long, I had actually gotten pretty good at, at targeting with the ads. And, and what I found was, you know, the money that I was making, because I did get sales. It's just that I wasn't profitable. But the sales that I was making, if you just looked at the ad spend, technically I was profitable. But then the problem was, since I was selling physical products, the ad spend wasn't the only cost that I had to worry about. I also had to, you know, source the products, ship the products, deal with returns and all this kind of stuff, which when, when you put all the, the, that extra cost into the equation, I wasn't profitable. And that's why things were so difficult for me. So, so the idea that popped into my mind was, you know, if I can eliminate the costs that I'm dealing with because I'm dealing with physical products and I just have like a digital product, let's say I put together a course that just cost me some time in the beginning that I have to put in to develop the course, but then I can run ads to it or I can do whatever I need to do and it won't, I won't have to keep paying to fulfill that thing. Then I can actually make it profitable. So that was the plan. Now the, the problem with the plan was I had no clue about what kind of digital product I can create. And I didn't know anything about, you know, uh, affiliate marketing or, or other opportunities that are out there to, to sell things without having to create it. But but that was my challenge. I didn't know what kind of product I can create. I didn't see myself as having any skills that people would want to pay for, especially since I hadn't built a profitable business. So I couldn't make one of those courses that say how to make a million dollars in 30 days, you know, <laughs> but, but so I had no clue what to do. So I ended up coming across a book and I have it next to me. It's been next to me on my bookshelf here forever. Oh, here it is. So this is a book a lot of people in the internet marketing space probably recognize, but I came across this book from Mr. Russell Brunson called Expert Secrets. And what the book is about is essentially how to build an information business. And that's exactly what I needed help with. I needed to be able to figure out what I had to offer people and how I can package that in a way that people would actually want to buy it. So I, so I started reading the book and in the book russell brunson mentions something that wasn't a focus of the book but it's kind of just a side note that he mentioned and what he said is all of the you know they go he goes into a lot of marketing principles in this book and and how to how to you know package whatever you want to sell and, and market it to the world but what he mentioned was you can still use these principles even if you don't have something to sell but what you can do is you can take these the, these approaches for marketing and apply it to somebody else's product. Now, when he said that, I found that idea really interesting because that solved the problem of trying to figure out what product I can um, create. Instead, what I could do is find a product that was already giving value to people and just become that middleman who matches that product with the right audience and then make a commission off of that, which is called affiliate marketing. So that's how I got into affiliate marketing. And that journey was interesting too. I'll give a, a quick summary, but basically in my first month with affiliate marketing, I, I, I figured, oh, you know, I learned Facebook ad targeting pretty well. And I had borrowed a bunch of money from people to pay off all those bills that I had, but I still had some money left over because I borrowed some extra money because I still wanted to figure out a way to make money. And I was like, you know, I need a little bit of leg room just in case whatever next thing I do does cost a little bit of money. So, so what I did was with the affiliate marketing, I started running Facebook ads again. And I thought that for sure I'll be okay because this time I don't have to worry about all those extra costs that I had to worry about when I had physical products. So what ended up happening was over the course of a month, I spent about $800 in um, Facebook ads and I made through the com affiliate commissions, I made a total of $0. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so you can imagine how I was feeling at that point. I was really, really crushed because I already went through this huge, you know, it was a it, it was a very difficult experience getting that eviction notice, getting myself out of that situation, losing hope, um, you know, in my journey as an entrepreneur and all of that. And then now I found something that I thought was the answer to everything and, and would get me out of the situation. And then I just got myself even deeper into the hole. And now I lost the rest of the money that I had borrowed from my friends. So, so I was in a pretty difficult situation, but, but I didn't give up because I knew that if I, if I gave up at that point, I would be doomed because my own, what was my other options? I was a university student who hadn't finished his degree. So in terms of like going out and getting jobs and whatever, I wasn't going to get some crazy high paying job. I would get a regular, you know, minimum wage or whatever job that I know is not going to make me enough money to pay off all this debt that I had. Um, I, I couldn't even, to be honest, I couldn't even get another job because I was a student and I was working at the same time. So I didn't even have time to take on another job. You know what I mean? So, so basically the way I saw it was it's, it's do or die. Either I can, um, you know, figure out a way to make this thing work and get some results or I'm screwed either way. So I might as well just continue and, and, and try to figure out a way to do this without spending money. So that's what I decided to do. I decided that I was going to, you know, I heard about organic marketing. I knew about organic marketing, just never tried it before. And it seemed like it was something that's going to take years to get any traction. So I didn't want to um, go that route initially, but I had no option now. So what I did was I started joining different Facebook groups. I decided to take Facebook as the platform to start with. And um, so I joined these Facebook groups and I started learning from other people who are in affiliate marketing, who I, who I saw were getting results and in their groups, they would share the different strategies they were using. And I would keep an eye out for organic strategies, things that didn't cost me money um, to do. And what I did with, when, when I came across a couple of strategies that people had used and got results with is I did something most, most people don't do online, which is I did it. <laughs> I, I took action on it because too many of us just spend time reading this stuff and we don't realize, you know, people contact me all the time right now and they're like, Zeki, you know, you're getting really good results in affiliate marketing. I, I'm part of your Facebook group. I, I'm on your email list or whatever. I, I need your help. Can you tell me how to, how to start getting results and how to start making money through affiliate marketing? And I'm like, well, you said you're part of my email list. You're part of my, you know, Facebook group what am I sharing in there? That's, that's literally like all I'm sharing in those places is what to do strategies to use. And I share these things freely, just put these things into practice. I'm like, how, how many of these th things have you done? And most of the time people haven't tried it because they just think, Oh no, that's not the thing for me or that thing's not going to work. Here's the secret guys. All this, these different strategies you hear me talk about, you hear other marketers talk about, there's tons of people on the summit. So, so all these different strategies that have worked for other people that people talk about, they all work. That's why people are talking about them. All of them work. And, and you'll even hear contradicting advice from people. But the funny thing about it is a lot of times both, both those contradicting pieces of advice, they work. They're just different ways of going about doing the same thing, right? So what you need to do is you need to latch on to something, choose a strategy that has worked for somebody, just latch on to it and actually do it. So that's what happened. I, I, I took action on the stuff and was very consistent with it. I had a lot of hunger because of the situation I was in. And what ended up happening from that month where, you know, I lost $800 in affiliate marketing, the next month I had made over a thousand dollars in commission just through not spending any money. Um, just connecting with pe to people on Facebook, being active in different Facebook groups. People would contact me in messenger about things. I would talk to them about the issues they're facing in their business. I knew about softwares or other things that could help solve those problems. I would recommend it to them with my affiliate link and boom. So, so what ended up happening was I made over a thousand dollars in affiliate commissions that month. And that for me was an eye opening experience. Cause that's when I realized, you know, I, I talked about how I was starting to doubt whether or not there was even a such thing as making money online or, or if people just make it seem easier than it actually is. But when I did that and I realized how simple it actually was for me to pull it off by just taking action on some very simple, easy, doable, um, you know, pieces of advice, they're, they're simple. See, when I say the word easy, it might be a little bit misleading they weren't easy because they required consistency. They, they, they weren't difficult, but it wasn't easy because it required consistency. And that's where most people fail. But, but I did these simple things and then I got these results. That's when I decided to go all in and dedicate myself to this because I got to the point where, you know, I had enjoyed my job before. Um, I mentioned how I worked in sales, but at this point I had left sales and I was actually working as a manager. I was the Canada manager for, for a nonprofit organization. So basically I oversaw all of Canada and, and, and training people, hiring people, um, you know, overseeing what's going on. So it was a, it was a big job, although it was part-time, but 
I had enjoyed it in the beginning because I'm a person who loves growth and loves challenge. And when I initially got into the job, it was very wildly out of my comfort zone. I felt like a fraud, imposter syndrome. But then eventually it got to the point where it was just second nature. And I actually started dreading my job, to be honest. So, so I really wanted to, uh, you know, I wanted to get out there and, you know, be able to leave my job, focus full time as an entrepreneur and start coming up with my own ideas and innovating and all that kind of stuff. And I saw affiliate marketing as the opportunity to, to get me to that position financially. So I focused heavily uh, for the next couple months. And what ended up happening from that point is seven months later, I was able to leave my job for good. And I haven't gone back since. And also there hasn't been a single month where I made less money um, than when I was working combined between my affiliate income and, and my work income at the time. And the funny thing about it is, you know, I'm going to mention this for some people who might be at the stage in the journey. When I left my job, it was a nerve wracking situation. I mean, decision to make because I had realized the reason it happened was I had realized at that point that when I looked at my, I was actually doing my accounting. And when I looked at the money that had came in, I realized that, you know what, I could have gotten by for the past couple months without a job, uh, just from the, my affiliate income. So knowing that, and knowing that my focus has been split between my online stuff and my job, how much money could I actually make if my focus was 100% on my online business? What, what kind of uh, yeah, products did you uh, promote like during this? Uh, yeah, like w when you started like, yeah, affiliate marketing is the right thing. Like you mentioned Russell, Bruss, uh, Russell Brunson. So I guess probably something like his books, his uh, click yeah, so, or something. So, so his, his stuff were some of the stuff I promoted. Uh, but I also promoted like softwares, um, different courses and different stuff. So anything that, that I was using or also things that I came across that I thought were valuable for people, I would just sign up for their affiliate programs and I would be promoting them. I, I promoted a lot of different stuff. And here's the thing about affiliate marketing, by the way. Um, you know, some people get like really locked into only promoting one thing. That's one approach you can take. I like to promote a bunch of different things because what you can do is you can build up, you know, for example, email marketing is really important. If you build up an email sequence and you have tons of stuff to promote, you can have your sequence going on forever, um, automated, just promoting things to people, solving their problems, right? But yeah, so I promoted a lot of different stuff, uh, but mostly like courses, softwares, and, and other resources like that because I was fake fo focused on the um, make money online slash entrepreneurship niche since that's something I'm passionate about. But, but yeah, so that's, that, that's what I did. Uh, but yeah, at, so at this point where I left my job, it actually happened because I watched a Sam Ovens video on YouTube where he was talking about focus. And then it got me thinking what I said, where I was like, you know, if I focus 100% on my business, then I can probably make way more money. But it was very nerve wracking to do it because part of me, because it all happened so quickly in the matter of a couple months, part of me felt like this whole thing is a fluke. And, you know, next month I might just make no money <laughs> or just make it like a couple hundred bucks. You know what I mean? And, uh, and it wouldn't be enough to replace my income. So I was really worried about it. But like I said, it was, I'm happy I made the decision and I'm not saying that everyone should go leave their jobs because you're keep in mind, I did this like seven months into my journey. It wasn't right at the beginning. You know what I mean? So it depends where you are and if it's actually a viable option that makes sense. So for you how also. much like to put things into perspective, like how much money did you make with your job? During that time yeah so because i had a contract i will i wasn't that company doesn't allow uh, me to okay. say how much i know so i i i'm not on contract now but i know some people know what company i worked for so i just don't want to mention it okay. publicly on record how much they paid me just out of respect for them because i still have a good relationship with the, with the people there you okay know? so so i guess it was uh yeah probably enough to pay your rent and uh like your living costs something yeah like that. yeah so it was like uh, i didn't make a ton of money i didn't make a crazy amount of money but it was it, it, it was okay you know what i mean okay yeah. uh but i was making more money through my affiliate marketing so that so that so I ended up leaving and then I was like you know what, I'll probably be able to replace the whole thing it, so it was difficult what was difficult for me is the uncertainty that was going to come because I knew at the beginning of every month I knew because of my job there was a certain amount of money that's guaranteed to me you know what I mean uh, and then whatever I made through my business was kind of on top of that there were a little bit of it was recurring so so that would be guaranteed unless people canceled accounts but then the rest of it was kind of just you know based on what i did throughout the month so that's why it was very nerve-wracking because i felt like i was going from a situation where i at least knew that i'm making this baseline of income per month 
But then I was going to basically baseline of next to nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh, and, and everything was just completely based on my efforts. And luckily for me, I mean, I was single. I didn't have kids or, or wife or anything like that. So, so that kind of made it a bit easier for me to take this kind of risky uh, decision, but I did it. And since then, I mean, every single month, my, my income has been growing and, and, and it did pay off. The, the following month after that was, it was my second time hitting 10K in a month. Okay. So what, 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 one, one question um, yeah. um, for, for somebody who's like maybe like struggling, maybe they went to the One Funnel Away Challenge from ClickFunnels or hearing about like all these amazing opportunities. Maybe they tried like, yeah, tried a bunch of things that did not work. Like what would your recommend, like your recommendation with what you've learned uh, to maybe avoid this failure? So uh, <laughs> to, yeah. to shorten so, the process. I would say, uh, I would say, man, honestly, in terms of avoiding failure, I don't think you really can avoid failure on this kind of journey because keep in mind, like I got these results seven months in uh, working with affiliate marketing. But like I said, I had started this whole journey back in 2012. A lot of that part was me kind of dabbling and spending a lot of time reading stuff. Um, I mean, this one I actually took action on, but I have a whole bookshelf, by the way, of like, I don't know how many, how many books are in here. But like next to my computer desk here, I have this bookshelf <laughs> full of books over the years, marketing books, personal development, um, entrepreneurship, whatever, which was good because I needed the mindset shift and I needed to learn a lot of skills. But also there's a certain point where, where now when I think back on it, honestly, I was reading a lot just for the sake of procrastinating, having an excuse, telling myself that I'm learning. And that's true. I was learning stuff, but there's a point where you have learned enough and now you need, your action needs to outdo your studying i, I think this is especially important like uh when i see uh, people who are making money in the the make money online niche basically we we a lot of people like i went through this like i i had i you can see all these books behind me and i read all of them and did never took action but i was passionate about this uh uh, this topic. Uh, so at some point I also had my breakthrough, but uh, if you're not passionate about this topic, like I think then the, the best thing is like we'd run our two books and then apply this to, to local businesses, to like to, to real business where you, they, they, where they do not have any clue about marketing. Like in, in this make money online niche, this is really competitive. But if you go outside of this niche, oh, yeah, totally. they have this advice, like, like even advice that was, is, pretty much outdated it still works uh, for 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 companies on a local level yeah th that's actually really good advice um to give people because what i would say anyone who's getting started in affiliate marketing is yes the so the make money online niche um is in a way saturated in a in a way i'm kind of like for things in general that i apply is the idea of saturation usually doesn't dissuade me still because I know that you can still penetrate your way through it. But what I would say for somebody um, getting started, though, is yes, you know, a lot of times people ru rush to the niche of make money online as their thing, just like I did, or entrepreneurship, because it's something we're passionate about. That's why you're on this journey in the first place. So it's kind of natural for you to do. But what's really smart is to take the same stuff, um, you know, same principles, but apply it elsewhere. So one way is what Martin just mentioned in terms of going to offline businesses and actually applying it, which is really smart because you'll, you'll be surprised if you're not involved with offline businesses or you don't talk to people who own like brick and mortar businesses, um, you'll be surprised by how clueless they are around digital marketing and, and, and using the internet. Like their idea, a lot of them is simply to put up a Facebook page and every day, put up some random post, share some link or, or something on there. They don't really know what they're doing. And that's um, already pretty advanced. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So, so, so that's one, one route you can take. Also, even if you just want to do stuff online, you can focus in a totally different niche as an affiliate. You can go to the health niche in a specific area. You can go to camping. You can go to what something you're passionate about. That, and this is what I recommend. You know, the thing is, you know, this idea of influencers that you see on, um, on like Instagram or YouTubers that you see, you know how a lot of YouTubers make money? They actually make money, whether you realize it or not, as affiliates, because they'll be talking about whatever their channel is geared around. It could be gaming, for example. Let's say you're a passionate gamer and you have this gaming YouTube channel. You can actually make a ton of money as an affiliate for gaming related products. So you, so, so 
it pays to think outside of the box because the cool thing about that too is your competition in other niches aside from make money online is going to be much less than the make money online niche. Now, if you want to make it in the make money online niche, I'm not, I, I don't see myself as a guru and I'm not going to pretend that I have all the answers, but what I will say is because certain niches like the make money online niche in a, it, are pretty saturated uh, for affiliate marketing to get results. It requires that you, um, you know, you have some, a, a core competence that you can lean on. So for example, for me, that core competence is audience building. That's what I've been able to do. I'm really good on Facebook at building audiences, attracting attention and all that kind of stuff. So even if I know that there are a lot of other people on Facebook who are trying to, um, you know, who are affiliates and who are targeting the same like entrepreneurship, make money online niche as me, but I'm not afraid of it because I know that, you know, it's irrelevant to me what they're doing because I know how to build an audience. I'm going to build an audience and, and that audience is going to buy from me. So I don't, so I don't care what everybody else is doing. Now, if you're someone who's getting started and you don't have that core competency of building an audience or something like that, and you're not going to put in crazy amount of time to, to master that, then maybe what would be smart is focusing on another niche that's, basically kind of a blue ocean for you when it comes to being an affiliate. So that is a cool idea. Um, in terms of ideas for, for niches, I don't know because I, I haven't looked heavily <laughs> into. <laughs> okay. Into I, I think we, we but... covered this topic heavily and I, I think it was so important oh, to cover okay. this. And uh, now let's talk like the last part of the interview. You, you, uh, yeah. One of your last step after hosting also like two summits, you told me in the pre-chat, but uh, now you're, you're going into the software niche and this is something like, why, why have you decided to go into the software niche and how did this pro process look like for you? Okay, for sure. So yeah, so I'll, I'll explain why I got started in, I created my own software. That's what Martin is referring to. It's called Comment Funnels. You can check it out at www.commentfunnels.com. Also, there's going to be resources that Martin's going to, you know, have available for you and, and, and the software will be in there. But the reason I got into this is because I have a certain belief around affiliate marketing. Uh, I think most people will probably most af experienced affiliates will agree with it, but maybe some people won't agree with it, but this is the way that I look at affiliate marketing. And I'm saying this as an affiliate myself, but I see affiliate marketing as a stepping stone. I don't think that anyone should make affiliate ever make affiliate marketing their sole source of income. And the reason that I say that is because as awesome as affiliate marketing is, it's in my opinion, it's one of the best ways that for anyone to get started making money online because it just removes a lot of the barriers there. You don't have to create a product. Um, you can just focus entirely on the marketing of the product. You don't even have to worry about customer support and all that kind of stuff because that's what the actual providers of the products are going to take care of. So I love affiliate marketing for that reason. Now the downsides of affiliate marketing is there are certain aspects that don't have the same stability as if you were you selling your own product. And what I mean by that is as an affiliate, um, you know, an affiliate program that I'm, that I'm work that I'm, um, you know, a part of might change their terms and services at any moment. And they can change their affiliate agreement at any point. They can change their commission structure. They can change when they pay me out. You know, usually as an affiliate, you got to wait a certain period to get paid like 30 days or whatever it is, depending on their refund, um, you know, policy, even if they don't change anything to do with their affiliate program, they can just decide to specifically kick you out of their affiliate program because they don't like a video you did or something else. Right. So affiliate marketing is awesome for making money and for getting traction. But I, I always recommend that once you got traction and you got your stability in terms of income that you, you know, you're making enough money to cover your living costs and to start, you know, expanding, investing in other areas, then you should do that. And you should start creating, avenues of income streams that you completely own. So, and that can be creating your own courses that can be creating softwares, whatever, creating different types of products. So that's why I always had it well, since I got into affiliate marketing or, or actually I didn't understand this at the beginning, but a little bit into my journey, I, I started realizing this and I had it in the back of my mind that, you know what, once I, once I got a good footing with affiliate marketing, I'm definitely going to be expanding into my own, um, into my own products. So specifically the software that I created, the way that I came about that idea was simply, I created it to solve a problem that I was dealing with because I mentioned how I am like a big thing for me for throughout my affiliate journey has been audience building and Facebook has been so far the core platform that I've been using for that. Now, one of the things that anyone who's an organic marketer on Facebook 
usually does is they're going to use what's called two-step posts because we understand that you know if you share links on Facebook just complete like posts that are just links Facebook doesn't like that and they're not going to let your post get far so there's another way that you can promote things on Facebook and get it to actually go viral and let Facebook's algorithm promote it for you and that is by using what we call two-step posts which essentially are any post where I say I have such and such thing if you want it please comment below and you probably have seen these posts all over if you're active on Facebook, but you maybe didn't realize what people are actually doing. So what we're doing is instead of giving you a link to whatever offer we're promoting, we're telling you to comment on the post because what, what that's going to do is when Facebook sees a lot of engagement on the post, it's going to cause the post to go viral, which means also more people are going to comment. It's going to go even more viral. And then now the best part is all these people are commenting are leads who are interested in whatever it is that we're promoting. So that's why we use it. Now, the problem with those type of posts, and a lot of my friends who are really big in the digital marketing space and, and use Facebook heavily to monetize their audience, have stopped using these posts entirely, even though they're super effective. Like, I've made thousands of dollars off of single one of these type of posts. But, and I know so many people who've made way more money than I have off of these posts, but they stopped doing them because... When you start getting like 150, 200, 300 comments on these kind of posts, it gets very difficult to respond to everybody. You have to sit there and copy and paste the message to different people, but then you also need to change that message up every once in a while because if, you, if it's the same exact message to all 200 people, then Facebook is going to throw you into Facebook jail because they're going to say, oh, this is a spam bot. It's not a real person. And it just takes way too much time. What some people do is they'll hire somebody, but then that can get costly because now you got to pay for their time for doing it. And you can have them doing something that's way more you know, worthwhile in your business rather than just copy and pasting messages. So I wanted a solution to that um, problem. So that's why I created my software called Comment Funnels, which basically what it does is it automates that whole process. It lets you click one button and then it's going to go in and it's just going to bulk reply to, it's going to go one by one and reply to all these different people based on the limits that you set, you choose how many people you want it to respond to, you choose how quickly you want it to respond so that Facebook doesn't give you any problems. You can add in as many versions of your response as possible and it'll randomly cycle through it. So basically it was, um, it was a software to help mar marketers on Facebook automate that task. And it went really well. Um, I, actually right now I'm in the launch process of it. So I had a pre-launch for it initially about a month before launching and then while I was working on the funnel for the launch, I did kind of what I call a semi launch, which maybe we'll talk about more in a bit. Um, but, but yeah, so it was, it went well, it was a great experience and definitely, um, I strongly recommend it to anyone who's at that stage as an affiliate. If you started getting results, then start investing. I, I, I hired a developer cause I don't know coding. I hired a developer to create it for me, but I made how much more I made at least 10 X what I put into it so far. And so right have now, you still, sold the, the software before you created it? Or? I did. I did. Yeah. So the pre-launch was actually, the software was not yet finished. So during the pre-launch was what I did that while my developer was working on it. So I just created a simple funnel and it was kind of a giveaway contest as well to get a bunch of leads for it. So I was building up a wait list for the software so that I can sell it to them when it's ready. But then what I also did was I offered them a special, I gave them a special pre-order package, which was the most heavily discounted lifetime deal that I've ever done for the software. So everyone who purchased at that point, they got a really, really good deal on the software, which meant for me also, I was able to generate a bunch of sales uh, before the software was even completed. And I actually made back all the money that I invested into creating the software before I even had the software done thanks to that pre-launch. So, so yeah, I did do that. And uh, now you also, um, yeah, did like a seven K like of, of your software in a week, like uh, without uh, no funnel, like, so, so yeah, without was, actually was it, was, this... it was over 10 K now, man. <laughs> so, so was this, uh, this was after your, your, your software was ready, right? Oh, yeah, so this was the software was ready, but the funnel wasn't ready. So I, I just recently actually finished the funnel, and right now I'm working on the affiliate campaign for it. So I'm going to have a whole separate launch now with affiliates. But this one was, it was kind of, it's kind of, it, it's interesting because, you know, people always talk about the importance of being able to launch things imperfectly and just do not not be a perfectionist when you're doing things um, in business. And this for me was a huge lesson in that because what I did was. You know, I knew it was going to take me time to get my funnel done for the software, but I wanted to generate some initial sales because the problem I had is I'm actually leaving 
in about two weeks from the time that we're recording this right now, I'm leaving on a trip to Africa. So I'm half, I'm half Ethiopian. I'm going to be going back home for the first time. I'm going to be visiting Africa, uh, seeing family there and stuff. And I'm going to be there for like six weeks or so. So initially I was actually supposed to leave like two weeks ago. Yeah. Around two weeks ago was my initial plan. I just decided to postpone it because of how well the launch was going to be honest. (laughs) And I wanted to just keep pushing things. But, um, but initially two weeks ago, I was going to leave on this trip. And the problem was at the time that the software was done, it was about a week out from, from that trip or a week and a half or something like that. So I knew that it would take me like a week to put together a really good funnel. And if I waited until then, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't be present. Like I wouldn't, you know, I'm not, I don't expect to have the same internet access and different things there. So that, and the time zone and stuff like that, there's going to be certain t- challenges that I'm going to have to launching while I'm, while I'm on, on this trip. So I wanted to have a way to kind of semi launch it without the funnel. Um, so what I did was basically I, I just took a super simple approach. It was a combination of Facebook posts. So there were certain types of posts that I was sharing that I knew would get a bunch of people's attention. And then for the people who are interested from seeing those Facebook posts, all I did was get them into messenger and tell them, Hey, here's the offer that I got right now. You can get a lifetime deal for this much until I, until the funnel is complete, which is going to be done in a couple days within the next two weeks. Here's the link. It's a checkout link because I didn't have a funnel for it. So literally I just had a checkout page, my Kartra checkout page. I just sent them that link and I'm like, go here, purchase, and then send me a message when you finish and I'll set up your account for the, for the software. So that's all I did. Just doing through that, I made over 10 K in two weeks. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. Th- this is Literally something that, that, that I learned also like from Mike Filsame and Andy Jenkins and um, yeah, do not let a technology get in the way. It does not matter if you collect your, your money on Kartra and then set up the account manually because you already got, got paid for it. And exactly. what most people like think about, yeah, I need to automate this and how do I integrate like Kartra with your software? So once they, they buy, they will automatically, the, the account will be set up and everything will work smoothly but when you're in the beginning stage of the software and i wasted so much time like with this and and money more more importantly with my software thinking about these problems but uh right now it's just like yeah i've i I just send people an email yeah i will send you the the login and the, the license code manually and then you can activate the software and that's good enough in the starting phase you do not have to worry it's more important like as you said like doing the facebook post to actually sell the people and send them to the checkout card because that's the most difficult part as uh, for for us as entrepreneurs is getting people to open their wallet put out their credit card and give us money and and the rest is fulfillment this is not not something you you need to like automate too much (laughs) at least in the beginning Exactly. And, and that was the issue, man. That was part of it. So I didn't have the funnel done, but also that whole automated account creation wasn't done yet. But, but you don't, you don't let things, um, you don't let things stand in your way. You know what I mean? You can always, and this is part of being an entrepreneur, a really important skill that you need is resourcefulness. So, so what I, the question I asked myself was really simple. What is the bare minimum I need to sell this software now? And that was my answer. Really all I needed was a way to attract their people's attention, which I did through my Facebook post. And then I needed a way to to you know give them the offer which i did through messenger and then i needed a way to charge them money which all i did was send them to the checkout page for the product <laughs> and and they just did the payment but it was okay, that you, you, you just mentioned uh, that you use Katra, so uh, i'm just curious because i will be like one of the ways to monetize this event is promoting Katra because i think it's an amazing platform so why did you choose Katra? yeah man i i, I still use Katra because i love um it's very well done you know there's so, so what Kartra is, it's a lot of things to be honest together, but you, you might be familiar with different funnel building softwares, click funnels, build Kartra. Um, I don't know how many other ones there are out there, but what Kartra is really, is kind of, it's an all in one marketing platform. So it has funnel building. Um, it has, you know, email platform. It has help support desk built in so many things built in together. Um, now the other, the other software that I know that's like that, that came out before was builder was builder all. I think it's called. Yeah. Builder all. But the thing with builder all. So I, I joined builder all a long time ago. Um, never used it heavily, but, but I didn't like it so much because I felt like it was, it tried to be everything and then it was not really good at anything. But the, the cool thing about Kartra is it also has this all in one marketing approach, but, but they actually successfully managed 
to be good at everything that they do. So the, the, the email, one of the, my favorite things about Kartra, and this is actually what got, there were two things that got me to switch to using Kartra for all of my backend stuff in my business, which was the email platform and the affiliate platform, because I needed a really good affiliate platform. And that's what, that's what I was looking into different options. And then I saw that Kartra was really good. Um, and then also the email automation platform, because the, what I would compare the email automation platform is I would compare it to active campaign, which if you know, email, like just pure email software, that's like top notch. Right. Um, now the thing with active campaign is when I got, had an active campaign account, they banned me um, real quick because I'm an affiliate marketer and I didn't know that they're kind of touchy. They do allow affiliate marketers, but they're kind of touchy around it. So my first email, which I wasn't even promoting a um, product in, it was just a, a, a sequence to get people familiar with me talking about my story. And I talked about getting into affiliate marketing, all this kind of stuff. They banned me <laughs> because uh, they banned me from it. So, so I couldn't use that. Um, but then I, all the other email platforms that I knew about, I didn't really like until I came across Kartra because I tried a lot of different ones. I tried to convert kit so many different things, but I came across Kartra and I started playing with it. And then I realized the automation capability was on that same level with active campaign, but Kartra doesn't just come with email. It came with so many, you know, all the other stuff that I needed. And the best part about it all is it's all integrated with one another because you have it on one platform. It's all integrated with one another, which means for example, when I go into my Kartra um, dashboard and, and look at my, email list i can actually so i have several different email lists i can look at e very easily the earnings per lead like how how much is each lead on this list worth for me um you know lifetime value and all this kind of stuff why because my cart my checkout is inside a cartra also and it's tied in with that lead it knows when i send emails how much money did this email make me if i'm selling my own products and all this kind of stuff. It's just really, really cool platform. I love it. Uh, and, and that's why I use it. It's really easy to use. And, and yeah, I definitely, definitely recommend try it out at least see how you like it. And I'm sure you will fall in love. Cause I know I did. <laughs> yeah. And uh, same with me, like this summit is hosted completely on Kartra and I, I talked with their chief revenue officer, AJ Roberts, who I did also did an interview with and we will put a special offer. Yeah. Just for Kartra uh, together with the summit as well. So uh, yeah, thank you so much for yeah <laughs> doing the marketing for me. Uh, <laughs> that, that is amazing. And um, yeah, we will also put together a, a special offer for, for your software because I think it's amazing for people who use, Uh, yeah organic traffic get, getting traffic on facebook because yeah facebook definitely wants engagement and this is a way to automate this so any final advice from from uh, your side about like what's the best way to, to get started for somebody who's yeah facing all this yeah options and possibilities yeah. maybe they tried a bunch of things like what's what's your final advice yeah so i think one of the biggest challenges that face beginners is this uh, is this issue of shiny object syndrome you always see you see someone come out and say that i made 10 grand in the last two weeks doing a, s a certain thing or i made five grand this month doing this or whatever so then now to you that's that next big thing and you and you keep changing from one thing to the next thing that you hear about to the next thing and you're just trying too many things at once right so the the biggest thing that i that that, that i think i can give you um you whoever you are watching this video if you're at that stage where you're getting started in your journey is focus and you've probably heard about this before but a lot of times we hear advice but we don't really take it if you don't if you're not doing what you heard sometimes you think you understand advice but if you're not actually doing it then you don't really understand it so so make sure to focus the best thing that you can do to to actually start getting results in your journey is to just choose one thing and focus on that until you start seeing results so what i mean by that choose one thing to you know focus as your core primary offer so you can build content around that choose a very specific you know if you're going to go audience building route choose one place one platform to build that audience so maybe you're going to focus heavily on youtube or you're going to focus heavily on um facebook whatever it is whatever traffic strategy even let's say beyond audience but whatever your traffic strategy is choose one thing to focus on and until you start seeing results just focus on one course of action Until you start seeing results, then when you start seeing results is when you start adding other things to it, because now you have, you know, you have a control on what on your base already and you can start adding 
you, you build your you build your home one brick at a time. You don't just try to dump a bunch of bricks together and expect it to form formulate the proper way. I will also put a link to you, to your website or to your Facebook group next to this interview somewhere on in the resources section. So yeah, say thank you so much, Seiki. Awesome. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate you.